this whole area of Hakodo is just like a playground. It's so much fun to just wander around and explore. You could be a summit hunter or you could just play. Hakoda Aomori is famous in the wintertime for backcountry skiing, as well as for the snow monsters, the Juhyo. The Hakoda mountain range is not one summit, but 18 in total split into a northern and southern area. Today is January 26th, a Tuesday, so it shouldn't be that crowded despite how popular this area is. And I'm just going to walk around and explore. I'd like to go to Odake, the highest summit, but it's about the journey, not that destination. It's been warm over the last week, and so these snow monsters are melting a bit, but they are still stunningly beautiful. One of the nice things about Hakoda in the wintertime is that you can basically walk all over the place. It's easier, of course, if you follow an existing snowshoe trail or go backcountry skiing like many people do, but if you want and you're up for the exercise, the snow is usually hard enough packed from late January on that you can just make your own route and explore. Snow monsters here are melting from all the warm days we've had recently. Even though we started from the top of the ropeway, there's still a lot of ups and downs if you're heading towards the highest peak of Odake. Starting to crack and melt here in this unseasonably warm weather. Up here, we're on top of the uh, snow monsters. Snow is so deep, only the tops are popping out. It really looks like an alien landscape. This is Ido Dake at 1,550 meters. The uh, caldera, our cavity here, was formed by an eruption hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Approaching one of the cabins. It looks like a great place to stop and have a snack. There's Odake towering right in front of us. And here's where I came from, Idodake. It's been about two hours and I've come from there up around this mountain and then up here. 
the final ascent to the summit of Odake is pretty much just straight up. Great conditions, except the sun is right ahead of me. Here we are, reaching the top of Odake, and I can see Mount Iwate in the distance. One thousand five hundred eighty-five meters, Odake, the highest point in the Hakoda mountain range. From here, it's a little cloudy, but we can see the ocean, Mount Iwaki, other summits in the Hakoda mountain range. Far away there, Mount Iwate. All in all, not bad. It is very windy up here on the summit of Odake, the highest peak of Hakoda. I think one of the great things about Hakoda is that you don't have to come here. This is the summit, but you can enjoy this area fully without ever coming up to this one. The whole area is gorgeous. Let's get down out of the wind. <laughs> Oops, slipped on the snowshoes again. <laughs> Please allow me to regale you with one more of the legends of Tono, the Tono Monogatari. There's one that I read recently that sort of stuck out in my mind, so I wanted to share that. There was a few men from Tono who had taken a short trip toward the coast, that seems to be a common theme, and on their way back, it was late at night, and near a small stream, they saw a woman kneeling with their back to them. And one of the men immediately recognized this woman as his wife. but. It was absurd, he thought, that his wife should be out in the middle of the night this far from her home, um, kneeling by a stream. So what do you think he does? He immediately then pulled out his knife, the one he uses for cleaning fish, and stabbed her in the back. She let out a grievous cry and collapsed, dead. But she didn't immediately change into some creature or whatever he expected her to transform into, her true form. And so he told his friends to wait there and stay with the body, and he ran back home. You see a woman in the middle of the night that looks like your wife, so you immediately murder her with a knife because she shouldn't be there, so she must be a ghost? This is, uh, yeah different time, I guess. When the man reached his home, to his relief, he found that his wife was there and she had just woken up. She said she had the most horrible dream. In the dream, she had gone out to meet him and had been attacked by some terrifying men. He then told her to stay home and he ran back to his friend. When the man got back to his friends, he found that the body of the woman he had stabbed had transformed into the corpse of a fox. And it is said then, at the end of this little tale, that it was often said that when people had dreams and traveled out into the night in their dreams, they took the form of a fox. So then we learned he had killed his wife's dream self, which apparently did no harm to her whatsoever. So it had sort of a happy ending, if somewhat creepy. When I hear these legends, I wonder if these are what they're represented to be. That is the honest tales that people told around Tono and that inevitably some people took literally and believed as actual events that took place. Given how many people in Japan today very much believe in ghosts and uh, have seen them, I guess it's not so surprising that uh, 110 years ago or so, um, people would take this sort of thing literally as well. Some parts of this trek are really hard. You just go up, 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 up. And it's no shoes. This is a real workout. Whew. I also made a video here last year, which I went a different route and the conditions were different. So if you want to see more snow monsters and uh, some nice cliff ledges, um, come check that out. It's uh, right up in the top right-hand corner.
if you're anywhere in Tohoku in the wintertime, you definitely should come check out Hakura. If you use Instagram, I'm Quinlan on Instagram and uh, Go North J on Twitter. The route I took today was about eight and a half kilometers and uh, took just under five hours. Granted, I didn't rush, uh, but I think for most people it would probably take about that long. So if you want to go from the top of the ropeway to Otake, uh, give yourself at least five hours, I would say. Um, granted, I did fly the drone stuff. If you huffed it, you might be able to do it in uh, significantly less, but probably want to go slowly, relax, take photos, etc. So yeah, you'll need at least five hours to go to Odake and back. It's a really beautiful day up here, but uh, the last ropeway is coming soon. And so I better get back to it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the trails. Okay.